So I'm uh, sitting here with uh, composer Howard Shore, who just scored the film Funny Boy. Uh, Howard, thank you so much for taking uh, time to do a quick chat today. Good to see you. Good to be with you. Good to see you. Um, so I know we have very short time, so this is not going to be a normal kind of long interview, but um, so I appreciate your time, of course. But I want to you know, kick off uh, uh, asking about Funny Boy, because Funny Boy is a uh, coming of age uh, drama set against the backdrop of the Sri Lankan Civil War. So what about this film uh, attracted you to the project? What made you kind of want to jump in and do this? Well, it really had to do with the director, Diva Mehta. Um, I was introduced to her uh, by some mutual friends uh, a few years ago, and we tried to work together on uh, Midnight's Children, uh, which was uh, their Salman Rushdie, Rushdie book. And um, I couldn't schedule it. It didn't, it didn't quite work out, but we wanted to work together. So when this opportunity arose and the film was so wonderful, I kind of just jumped at the chance to work with her. She's a wonderful director. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Her filmography yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Um, how did you uh, approach the film musically? What was your kind of starting point that pulled that first idea out of your head? And what did you want the music to accomplish with these characters and the, the whole plot of the film? I think it really had to do with the relationship of the two boys. I, sometimes I look for the most smallest element in a film uh, to uh, take the point of view of the, of the main character but in a very intimate uh, relationship. And then I can just expand that through the film. So uh, really that's what I did. I mean, I wrote from the inside of, that rela of the relationship and then expanded it for the rest of the film. Did you uh, thematically, did you apply any themes to certain characters or certain ideas throughout the, the, whole, the whole structure of the plot? Yeah, there's a main theme uh, for the uh, main character. And there's uh, the thematic ideas, motifs for this conflict, the civil war. Um, but I took, uh, you know, an approach of hope. And so it's not a dark film. And I treated it kind of like you might have an Italian uh, comedy of the 60s in a very light way. I really wanted to step very lightly through it and really focus on the relationship of the boys which was really the most fun part. So I think I instilled this feeling of hope, uh, you know, into the story, into a very, it could be a, could be a very dark story. Yeah, I mean, it's dealing with these, uh, I mean, real life events. So you're dealing with telling a story of these characters kind of on this backdrop of, uh, an, I mean, a really big uh, world event that happened. Was that a challenge for you to navigate to make sure it didn't become too melodramatic or too kind of leaning in one area? Yeah. I think I just stayed light, you know, I stayed on a very light uh, point of view and tried to bring out some of the inherent uh, humor in the story. And that, that was the main focus. And I think I went through the whole film with that in mind. And then I, as I mentioned, expanded that, you know, into the conflict that was happening around them, the war that was ensuing. Absolutely. Um... So what was the most creatively rewarding aspect of this project for you? Did you come out of it learning something new? Was it, did it challenge you in a different way? Or is it something that really just kind of piqued your interest? I think it was working with Deepa. Uh, we met in Rotterdam. I did a concert of Crash in Rotterdam with the Rotterdam Philharmonic in February. And she was editing in Madrid. And then she came up to Rotterdam with her producer, David Hamilton. We had dinner. Uh, with James Sizemore and Alan Frey, who worked with me. And uh, that was the only time we really met in person. Everything else was done virtually. So it was a, a challenge to do it, but we had, uh, we had good technology working and you know, we were able to communicate completely. And even from the very first meetings we had, she's so great. She kept everything, uh, you, know, bu uh, you know, everything flowing. Uh, creatively. And um, I, I thought it was a, a good working relationship with Adipa. And uh, it seems like, I mean, you had such a great working relationship with, with her when it comes just a little bit overall, when you're looking to work with a director, as a composer, what are kind of like the top, maybe like three traits that you search for and kind of help you do your job better? Well, uh, number one, musicality, being able to know or have some experience with music, uh, 
and be and know how to use music uh, in a film. The history of music is great to understand. Um, to work with a composer the way you would a good actor, let him develop uh, the music for the film, and you can edit and you can make changes, but let him express all of his ideas, even if they even if you don't quite understand them uh, in the beginning, and sometimes just. Uh, you know, be a, more invisible and let 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 the ideas and creative ideas flow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you mentioned that you took a light approach to this film. Um, did you spot it with, with, with her, and or did you? Was there a temp that kind of let you know where music should go? Did you feel like okay, it would be too much over here? We need to pull back. How did you make sure yeah. that it was, I guess, light? You know. Yeah, I don't think there was a. I don't think there was a temp. I can't remember, but we did. We, yeah, we did a proper spotting session, and um, we talked about different uh, compositional ideas and point of view type of thing, and where music could could be effective. Um, the spotting's really elegant. The m music is not overused in a way. Where it is used is very. Uh, uh beautifully done in terms of the spotting i thought and it's a lot of the score is based around this main thematic idea for the main character rg and so that theme is developed through the film she really wanted this one central piece that reminds me of the italian films of the 60s which i mentioned like yeah. cinema paradiso and the bicycle oh. thief and films like that so that was kind of what, what, when I first saw the film, I kind of immediately thought of those. Uh, it made me think of those Italian films, even though it's set in Sri Lanka, it had that kind of feeling to it uh, with the family and, uh, and, and how the mother and father were portrayed and the life around the dinner table. Uh, so that was, that helped. Yeah. That helped me find the center to it. And so when you're spotting with the director, I mean, at this point in your career, you're, you're such a veteran uh, of this profession. Can, if, a, if a director suggests like, oh, we should put some score here, this will be great. Do you, do you, if you feel like that's maybe gonna be pushing it too much, do you step up and be like, well, actually, I just from experience, I know to pull back here, or do you kind yeah. of work through it and test it out and see if it works or not? You can discuss those things, but it's a good idea to uh, follow through on the ideas of the director. It's, it makes sense, you know? You should try it to at least see if it could work. It might, it might not, but at least try, give it your best to find a way into every idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so for this, for this film, was there anything that, uh, I know you mentioned, I mean, taking a light approach, but was there anything specific that challenged you that you thought, okay, this is a bit tricky to navigate? Well, we did the recording, uh, it's kind of an acoustic electric score. We did recording in, with a, individual artists, uh, really good artists in London, uh, New York, Mumbai, and a small town in Switzerland. So we collected those ideas. Uh, the harmonium was used. You know, I used a few Indian elements, but it's kind of a colonial uh, era uh, period set in Sri Lanka in the 70s. So I was using Western and Eastern instruments and combining them and also using electronics as well. So that was kind of the approach overall. Uh, anything in the future that's uh, coming up that you have on your plate? Um, I wrote a guitar concerto called The Forest a few years ago, and it's coming out on DECA in April. It was written for the Montenegrin virtuoso Milos. It was recorded by the National Arts Center Orchestra Alexander Shelley conducting. Uh, so, it's, so that that will be in April. And also in April, there's a retrospective in Paris by the uh, Philharmonique uh, Radio France. And it's a three day concert, concerts of a lot of my music, three different uh, concerts from chamber music to orchestral pieces uh, to the mass, uh, they're playing Crash, so that's in April, second week of April. 
Well, uh, before we we wrap up, I kind of you know we're all going through this pandemic together as a as a world, as you know as a as a race of humans, and you know we're all tired and and, and exhausted from everything. So I thought we could finish maybe with a little a fun question. So I wanted to ask you if uh, if Howard Shore and his all nurse band was in a band battle with Howard Shore and his all B band, who would outperform who? I think the nurses would win. The nurses would win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the women have the advantage. <laughs> and then they're winning right now. I mean, they're saving our lives right now. So. <laughs> Although the bees are pretty tough. I think the women would win. The nurses would definitely win. <laughs> well, that's fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, and for anyone who doesn't know those references, please look them <laughs> up. <laughs> um, Howard, uh, I'm glad you're staying busy. And I, I hope you uh, stay safe and and, uh, and creative and, and still working and everything all, all through this. So it's, it's just a, a pleasure to, to get to chat with you. So thank you so Great. much. All right, then. Good all seeing right. you again. We'll meet Good in scene. person soon. We'll do it. Well, I, I owe you a, a nice, better interview in person. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cheers, Howard. Take care. You too. You too.